Yeah, yeah, you know what time it is. It's time for the Geek Enders Podcast. Mega Ran, Jesse and Dodger. What up? Let's go. Yo, it's the weekend. Yeah, it's time to geek out. Let it begin. Go on, stream and shout. It's Jesse and Dodger, so give them a follow and see what the Geek Enders are all about. Yo, it's the weekend. Yeah, it's time to geek out. Let it begin. Go on, stream and shout. It's Jesse and Dodger, so give them a follow. Number one geek podcast without a doubt. Yo, another end of another long week. Got a job and a kid, I know that you all beat. So, take a second, grab a drink and vibe while we catch you up in just a matter of time. On gaming, comics, whatever you're doing. If you're nerdy like us, then you know you should tune in. Thank you for sharing our world with us. Now follow, subscribe, and turn this up. Yo, it's Come the on. weekend. Yeah, it's time to geek out. Let it begin. Go on, stream and shout. It's Jesse and Dodger, so give them a follow. Number one geek podcast without a doubt. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Geek Enders with the amazing, the lovely Felicia Day. It's been so uh- long. I know it's been decades. We've both bred since we saw each other. I mean, I watch your stream sometimes and I got a wonderful gift sub from oh. one of your followers, Oliver, Very I sweet. believe. Yeah. Yeah. You two do be breeding. That's true. That's what breeding. I've heard about you. Yeah. 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 I will be breeding. I will never forget when I had my kid and somebody made like a congratulations picture for me. And the sub, the, the little caption on it was, one of my favorite people decided to become a breeder. And I think about that all the time. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> it, was, it was a very, su- very sweet thing to say, said in a way that made me go, huh? I guess, <laughs> I guess that's fair. I guess I am. A, I guess I did. I did breed. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, we did. We passed our genome. Our immortality is guaranteed ish. So true. So true. And now, now I can Me live too. through her in a way that is that is totally normal and healthy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, totally healthy. Yeah. yeah. I love it when we subsume ourselves in our children's life and then they leave and then we're like, life crisis. <laughs> I did Can't it easier. Wait. I found a golden idol that will grant me immortality. And it's much simpler than raising kids. Whoa. Jesse, That's yeah. Get, a, yeah. Get, a, get, a, get a vasectomy. <laughs> Is this the subtitle today, Jesse? Get, get a vasectomy. vasectomy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just immediate. Mm-hmm. I love it. Jesse, thoughts? Uh, here's the thing. I'll say this. While the Dodger Felicia pipeline has been uh, separated by years and time, mm-hmm. the Jesse Felicia pipeline, I have wormed my way into her life in a way that is unreasonable and unfair to her. And frankly, <laughs> I'm pleased with this whole endeavor, so she can say, get a vasectomy all she wants, because I will I'll pop up every now and then, like, oh, hello, Felicia. <laughs> He's like a little tapeworm eating me from the inside out. I'm like, <laughs> yep. oh. oh, what's down there? Oh, it's juicy poking out of my butt. You know what? Cracks Tacos me up. today. Oh, God, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you know what cracks me up is how many people were like, is is Jesse gonna do a whole big rigmarole like on co-optional? And also is uh. Felicia gonna say that she has no idea who Jesse is? And I was like, I feel like a lot of people don't realize how much stuff you guys do together and have done together over the it's years. True. I mean, also, I was... was just I was just tired of the joke. I'm like, I can't forget this guy again. I mean, I genuinely did forget him about seven times. And now I'm like, <laughs> I gotta know him now. He's in my f- he could get in my phone. Right. He could yeah. text me a bit emoji of his jaunty little face. This isn't, uh, speaking of which, this isn't a joke. I do, and I'm sure it's annoying. I feel bad because literally the other night it was like 11 p.m. I'm watching TV, House comes on, and, 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 the, and the person dying on House was Felicia. And I was like, photo, send to Felicia. I'm like, oh, you're on House right now. I was like, and I realized after sending it, that's probably the stupidest thing. You, like, who does that? Who no. does that to a- that was one of my, okay, listen, Hugh Laurie <laughs> is the hottest man I've ever worked with. I'm sorry, Jesse, it's true. Damn. And Damn. it was, 
I, I, when I look back on my awkward self there, I was like, I mean, thank God I was in a relationship at the time, but I, had I not, I think I would have thrown myself at Hugh Laurie's trailer door because he's so, <laughs> and he wasn't hot as house here. I want to, I want to tell this story. Yeah. Yeah. He wasn't Please. hot as house, like with the curmudgeonly, you know, rah, 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 with the cane and stuff, but offset, he would just pose around the, 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 he would pose in a motorcycle jacket against his Indian motorcycle in tight jeans, smoking, which is disgusting, but for some reason it worked for him. And I was like, how is this guy so hot? Mm. I, w- I, wanna, I wanna up your hotness factor for both of you. I know both of you are gonna eat this up, so I'm just gonna tell this story. Yeah, go for uh, it. After coming back from London, I went with uh, the Scary Game Squad boys. We went over to do a show. We were coming back, we we're on the plane, sitting three seats from us with his wife was Hugh, and they were knitting as a couple together the entire flight. That's You're welcome. So Enjoy that. <laughs> Enjoy that. That's so cute. Why is that so much hotter than the Indian motorcycle and smoking? <laughs> He's just sitting there knitting the entire time. I was like, this man wow. has got it all. He can do anything. I love that. Here's the thing, though. I didn't know he was British. I thought only, I was only exposed to Hugh Laurie. And after that, I became a, a black addict and all this stuff. But I didn't really know. And he on set was like, oh, my American accent is so terrible. It's awful. And he was really genuinely, like, really hard on himself. I'm like, you're British? If Americans there can't tell, it, it, it's fine, you know? Right. Yeah. I was right. like, you're whatever you want, man. You're, uh, you're just a commercially guy. And then off screen, you got this Indian motorcycle. Oh, it's all good. I, I will say that um, the episode was great because you were the one who who told House the truth that he looks sad. You finally got your vision back, and he's like, "What do you see?" And you're like, "You look sad." And I was like, "Oh, that when that's how the episode ended." I was like, "Oh, damn!" Oh my god! Yeah, because he was sad. That's House's problem. He's always my sad. name. My name was Apple, and I was a it blind was. architect. And I like, who would hire that woman to design a house? I mean, no I was... offense, but that's a hard sell there. What's crazy is you were you were Apple, the blind architect, who was an architect while blind, then got a, an eye from a guy. And then yes. when you got the eye, you saw the world ugly for the first time and quit being an architect. So when you could see, you stopped being an architect. And... I was like, wait, what is the premise of this? <laughs> wait, what is this? <laughs> I mentioned that to the showrunner and he gave me the nastiest look like, guest star, you shut up and do the line. <laughs> I also, Damn. on that set, because I had a problem with my eye, I had a huge, okay, you know contact lenses, they kind of cover just the colored part of your eye. Right. When you do a little, there's a, a, a contact that covers your whole freaking eyeball. And I had to have an eyeball handler on set dripping stuff in my eye all day oh my god and that was a first and a last hopefully yeah i know the yeah. the like the all black demon eyeball lens cover your yes. whole eye yeah it's not it's not fun to put in it goes I under bet. your lids <laughs> it oh, sounds bleh. scratchy Ugh. it's horrible horrible yeah I, I i feel like for clarity's sake uh for people who have never seen house or don't know much about house at the time when it was on tv it was huge Oh, yeah. It was yeah. Fox's like number one show. It was crazy. People loved that show. People still um, love it. I mean, you're doing oh, a rewatch yes. of it. <laughs> I did. I, I did watch it at 11 p.m. at night. So yeah, no. Uh, House will get me sometimes. I'll be like, I gotta see what what's House solving this week. It ain't lupus, that's for sure. It's definitely not lupus, except that one time. <laughs> except that one time it was. Yeah. I will say that I did a scene with Olivia Wilde. I don't even remember. I don't remember any of the lines, but she is so pretty. I forgot my lines because she has like the most symmetrical face in the world. And I genuinely forgot my lines because I was just looking at her during the scene. I was like, I'm so sorry. I forgot my lines because I was like, I just got in my head. I'm like, how do you how do you make your face this perfect? Is Mm. she is she real? That's very cute, though. Yeah, I was real (laughs) stupid back then. (laughs) I I think that's That's very cute. cute, It is. It's a, it's a very wholesome story, I think, to be like, I forgot my lines because the person opposite of me was so pretty. I think that's cute. That's why Dodger forgets to record sometimes. Because it's you're just, so pretty. Yeah. I'm Aww. like, oh, no, oopsies. Ah. What can, what I, can hecky, I say? I the up. internet agrees. 
Right, internet? Uh, this is where the comments uh, come. Uh, right? We can wait. We can wait. Mm -hmm. We can... Nothing. Not Literally <laughs> nothing. All right, well. Do you remember That's when cool. people used to draw fan art of you, like, super ripped? Um, Most what? of it was... No, no, no. It was... I feel like you're getting the version of this that is all lies. It wasn't Jesse super ripped. It was Jesse super ripped getting plowed by other internet celebrities. Yeah. It's, I wasn't was going to throw that the part bottom. in there. Uh, but, but Always the bottom. What I said I was still true. <laughs> I just wasn't I mean, going to get the whole context. But I'm glad that you did. I just There was a time period where everyone was doing fan art. It was like, awesome, thank you. But I was always just getting banged by other people. And I'm like, oh. why am I not the bangy? Wait, banger. Banger. Why am I always the bangy? Yeah. And I was like, I can't, guys. And they were like, that's just how we see you. I was like, cool, awesome. That's your so casting. Cool. You put it yep. on your resume. Specialties, <laughs> bottom. <laughs> uh, power, bottom. I'm not, please, please. Okay, I want to talk. I want to ask you guys: When in your life were you in the most fit shape? Like you were like, mm. oh, I'm gonna put on that, you know, that those tiny pants or whatever, and just walk around and with pride with my butt out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what when, when in your time? Um, when in your life? I mm. mean, the time that I was definitely at my like strongest, like like at my physical best quote unquote I guess would be when I was yeah. dancing when I was in high school oh yeah 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 because I, yeah. I was dancing all the time <laughs> yeah yeah agreed that's probably me too I, 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 clearly high school after that <sighs> MMORPGs killed this body but um in high uh, this is a real story and looking back probably problematic um in high school for one Halloween, my friends and I dressed up as the incredibly well-endowed dance troupe, which is the thing Amazing. we decided to be. Okay. We oh, wore wow. uh, like full body, like spandex tights, uh, but we had a sock that went like all the way down to our knee placed in a, you know, a certain place. And we were all going around the school, like dancing about the school. And what ended up happening is the drama teacher, I'll never forget this because it lives up here. This is what, hey, compliments live forever, even if they're weird. The dance teacher was like, you got nice legs and ass there, Jesse. And I was like, what? thanks, sir. Yep. So. You can't say that, sir. You can't say Excuse it. me, pardon me. You can't say that. <laughs> Doesn't. Wow. You, know, you, you can't say that, but it is. I'm going to say 25 years later and it's still up here and I'm still, <laughs> you know what? I still live off of that. I don't, I know I don't have the same legs and ass and I'm still like, my legs and ass are killing it. Way to go, Jesse. You're a good guy. So I'm just saying a compliment goes a long way. It's so even true. If it's, <laughs> even yeah. it's uh, from a person who shouldn't be doing it. Right, right. Even if that adult, that grown up should not have said that at that time. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's yeah. a, there's. <laughs> Here, I'll one, I'll one up you on a, on a weird thing that has stuck with me for a long time. That's like kind of on the same tree. Okay. I used to compulsively read um, Archie comics. We would get the double digest. They were like this big. Um, they, they're garbage but i used to read them all the garbage. time they're so but they're bad good. good garbage good garbage yeah but i would i would constantly buy them uh when i was in like middle school high school i just i just enjoyed reading them uh and there is an issue where they had all of the guys in like their friend group basically do like a beauty contest and jughead of course was the one who was like, I don't care about this, but everybody made him do it, right? And in the end, he won, because of course he did. But the reason that he won is because his knee he had beautiful knees. <laughs> you were know what? <laughs> I, all right, let me, let me ask a question, because first off, beautiful knees, I feel like may, might win you a thing, but also I think that's more mentally where other people are at, because I have conversations with people all the time, and they're like, my knees are so ugly. And I, I have a genuine question. Is that a thing people are really concerned about? Their knees? I was, I never thought about it until that freaking Archie comic. <laughs> and then I was like, can knees be beautiful? And then I started looking at my knees all the time. So thanks so much for that, Archie comics. I'm just, are knees a thing that people are like, I worked on my whole, I've spent years in the gym. I have a flawless physique, but my knees are so ugly there's i mean I think, knee surgery. I, I think especially women 
will be self-conscious about literally any part of their body. That's so and true. that's like, that is the world telling us to be self-conscious. I got to tell you, like t- when I first got on TikTok about in August, I was like, you need to do this lady. Um, and I actually have a little of uh, f- fun with it because I put no effort into it whatsoever, which is, re- is great. But uh, I was using those filters and like every single filter like made my nose look different. And I got super <gasps> self-conscious. Like, is this? Yes. That was the key to everything. If I just slimmed that nose down somehow earlier in life, this TikTok filter is so, you know, retroactively like telling me what I should have done. And I, it, it makes you so, and then all you can think of, like even you have a zit, you're like, oh, everyone's looking at my zit. Nobody's looking at it. It doesn't matter. But right. in your mind, it's like the only focus. You get fixated on a piece, a part of your body and you just can't get it out of your mind. I don't know if that's obsessive thinking, but I have all that all the time. Never with knees though. I, my knees are great. <laughs> gorgeous knees there's that filter that um, that uh makes people redheads that everyone's obsessed with right now on tiktok oh I'm yeah sorry, well, really? hold on i need to do hold that on. yeah um but the hilarious thing is it doesn't just make it so people are like oh my god i should definitely dye my hair and everyone has to be constantly reminded wait but remember this filter also changes your nose your lips adds yes. a million freckles changes your eyebrow shape it changes everything it's not just making you a redhead that's what the filter says but it's also yes. changing everything about you it's so toxic yeah and then it people is. going in and like i want my face to look like this you want to look like a brat doll it's not a good yeah. look. I see it all the time in real life, y'all. In LA, it's not a good aesthetic. It's not going to age well. <laughs> Every time I describe a person in LA, I have to explain like, a uh, face like a 20-year-old body, 75. Like it's, just, <laughs> yeah. I have to explain. Like, I'm not really sure how old this person was. They could be between 40 and 80. I have no, I cannot tell you how old. Yeah, that's LA. You're absolutely right. Mm-hmm. I read an article I read an article in the LA Times about, I guess, a matchmaking um, business in Silicon Valley where, like, rich dudes who are into tech, they're specifically, this matchmaking place places tech dudes from Silicon Valley with ladies in Los Angeles. And one guy was quoted as saying, women just take care of themselves better in LA. Oh, God. (laughs) And I wanted to just vomit all over the paper. Mm. Uh... Yeah. Mm. Take Although care I kind of like Jeff really... Bezos' wife. That's a taking care. Yeah, I don't really consider a lot of what tech bros consider good uh, to be of the interest of anyone. So I choose to ignore them on principle. Just yeah. oof, oof. Yeah, yeah. Mm-mm. The aesthetic is weird to me, but anyway. Mm. Jesse, have you had any work done? Me? No. But if I did, I'd tell everyone. Are you kidding me? Like I got, I got a baldy. Where? What's happening? I got a. Like, what's the thing where they take hair from one part of your body? Like, can I put butt hair up here and still be fine? I don't I know. Think I, I do don't really that. know how that works. I think I, if I could, I would. I would do that, and then I bribe go. everyone. You can do it. You could. I actually had a horrible situation last uh, earlier this year where I like a thyroid flare and a lot of my hair fell out, so I had to go to a doctor for this. Um, and you could do like. Uh, plasma injections you could plasma. do like spray you could do transplant like I, I I'm obsessive so I looked into all of it I'm too cheap to do any of it I just have some spray I put on and it seems to be working and my thyroid medicine but um listen I can hook you up with the right doctors but I look I'm in I do it I would I'm fine I think uh anything you want to do to your body is your own business I don't care I think some people take yes. it way too far especially in this city but like if it's going to make you feel better and you're going to walk around in the city and like be proud of yourself, who the hell, what the hell do I care? Yeah. As long as you're, this is the thing, do whatever you want with your body as long as you're doing it for yourself. But a right. lot of times it's motivated to a look super young for what to appeal to a certain male gaze, right? Or a female gaze, whatever gaze you're, you're not thinking about yourself. You're thinking about your effect on the external world. And then you're not making yourself happy because you're doing everything for other people, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, I'm with you completely. I think uh, as long as you want to do it and it's your thing, go nuts, have fun. Uh, if you want to like, <laughs> yeah, you want to look at the crazy huge lips, like do do the do it, go nuts. Some people love crazy huge lips, like it's fine. Yeah, but do it for you. Do it not because some exactly. people love it. 
Or a TikTok yeah. filter says you look better. Can I, <laughs> can I heel turn us for a second? Oh boy, yes. What's a heel turn? What is that? Is like, that a British term? Uh, I don't know. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, take some like one tiny bit of what we were talking about, but but point us in a different direction for a second here. When you said the word plasma, I forgot that plasma is real. <laughs> Does that ever happen to you where you hear a word and your brain immediately thinks of what it is like in a video game? <laughs> and then you go, yes. Oh my God. I forgot that that's like a real thing. I forgot the plasma is real. So I just want you all to know that you're welcome. My, my daughter's that. super into minerals. I don't know if uh, Clark's into Cute. minerals, but she's obsessed with finding quartz on the ground and minerals. And I was looking for a place we could go dig for minerals in LA. And there are, there are a couple places in California. You just go. You pay a flat fee, and then you they give you a pan. Oh, and, that's so and like fun. a scepter. Yeah, uh, uh, it's pretty cool. So we're going to go. But then I literally thought adamantium was a thing. I was like, is that real? Is that is This is real? what I'm prepared for. Oh, my God. See, I think in this space, when you say, like, into minerals, I'm like, oh, my God. She finally hit the right age to, like, go do cool stuff. Let yes. me just say <laughs> two recommendations. First off, tar pits. Got to go to the tar pits. Tar pits Second off. Drive out to the desert, go to that place that has the dinosaurs from Pee Wee's uh, Big Adventure. And oh, they I haven't let done you that. They let you pan for dino bones and like dino eggs, and you can go. It's great, and you can walk around, look at all the like really crappy uh, dinosaurs they have that are like, oh, like smoke comes out of their mouth. You can go. Oh, it's great, and there's like a bunch of stuff for kids to do. That's oh my god, I gotta do it. Uh, thank you for the hot tip. Um, my kids. I'm prepared really, for that. My yes. kids really into bugs. So, oh, bugs. That's yeah. cool. She got a bunch of um, cards with different bugs on them and like bug facts. And then she wanted to put them all over the wall. So I got her some like blue tack and she put bug pictures all over the walls. Um, so there's there's like a, a convention that happens in England, I guess, a couple of times a year that you can go to. And if if you're a kid and you go there they give you a bug, like a bug pet Ooh. to take home. And I was like, we have oh to God. go. So you yeah. have to do that. So uh, this year, my daughter had, we, we celebrate Dio de los Muertos here in LA. Uh, she goes to a school where they had an altar. And at, the, at, at that point last Halloween, she had never had someone in her life pass away. Right. So she found a June bug that she, well, she has a dead bug collection. It's it, she collects dead bugs. Oh my and God, puts them so does mine. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it's fine. We call and it the cemetery she, at our house. The cemetery. That's really sweet. It's like a ball <laughs> jar in her room. I'm like, we need to keep this sealed up. But anyway, she, uh, she basically made a painting of the June bug and she named it Molly and she put it on the De, La, De Los Muertos thing next to people's grandpas and stuff because she formed such a connection that's with the so, June bug. That's so sweet though. It is sweet. You know? Nobody's honored a June bug like that ever. You know, she might be the first. Um, Kids are stupid, man. <laughs> oh, stupid though. It's sweet. It's though. really cute. It's really sweet. Yo, no, absolutely. But when you look at it, you're just like, what? What was going through that child's mind? Same thing with Dodger. Just like Dodger has a story. I'm not sure the exact specifics, but it's about a bumblebee, and Clark just like. Oh. really being obsessed with this bee and about like it's stinger and all this. and that's the kind of thing where i'm just like kids are fascinating when they're interested in stuff yes and then they stop then they purposely stop being cool i'm <laughs> saying this to all 13 year olds you purposely made the choice to stop being cool and we all hate you for it anyway please continue but that's part of what being an adult is right is is reconnecting with the things that that you like once you get mm -hmm. once you get to the point where you're like, okay, I feel a bit more comfortable in my own skin, you know, I'm past this evolutionary necessity to feel like I am conforming, right? And like part of the collective and part of the group. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. now I can remind myself like, oh yeah, I'm really into bugs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. There's a I I just watched um there's a series called Made that I just watched, which was so unbelievably depressing and i'm so glad i watched it the acting was incredible but i will never ever watch it again and um there's a a scene that that takes place at a shelter where one of the girls says you know we're all so strung out some of us even forget our favorite color could be like that you know that's sad 
It is sad. It was extremely <laughs> sad. I cried through that whole fucking show, dude. <laughs> what was it about? Um, it's about, uh, it, uh, oh gosh, how do you even pitch this? It's about a girl who, um, at the very start of the show, she's basically escaping an abusive situation with her three-year-old. Mm. And they, they oh run away, and the only place that she can live is at a domestic violence shelter. And it's basically her, like, trying to get on her feet and give her kid a good life and figure out how to, like, like she's been in no. a situation where she wasn't able to have a job. Like, he controlled all their finances. She, you know, has a car, but it breaks down, and then she literally can't get a car, right? Like, it's just, it's, oh, it's so angsty, and it's so sad, and I was depressing. But it's fantastic. The acting was amazing in it. Um, but yeah. What, what time does Clark go to sleep? Uh, right now, because of daylight savings, like 9 p.m. And it's annoying the shit oh, out of me. <laughs> That's what my kid doesn't go to sleep until 9. And I have no life. I basically get out of, I I'll go to sleep with her because I, I was a stupid mom. And then at 9 o'clock, I roll out of her bed in the darkness. And I'm like, oh, I'm tired. And I just go to bed. I have no life after. I do the same thing. There's a, I'm on a, a D and D show with Jesse and pretty much every time that I'm late, everybody's like, I bet she's asleep. And I normally oh am. God. And they have to message Sam and be like, Hey, can you go wake up Brooke? Cause you're sleeping in bed with her. Cause I've fallen asleep in bed with her. Yes. Yeah. And if no one wakes me up, I'll wake up at 1am and be like, fuck. <laughs> like, Okay. Yeah. That's why I stop streaming at night because I'm just like, my circadian rhythm is I need to be in bed by 8.30. I can't, I can't not do it. I'm sorry. You know. You Where listen to, your to body. get vasectomy in <laughs> Los Angeles? Oh, sorry, what? I yeah, nothing. Checked out there for a minute. No, nothing, it's fine. You were selling me on parenting so much that I just was yeah, googling see, about it i don't think it. either of us are trying to sell you on parenting <laughs> no if Nobody anything we're both going you. i don't think this is for you bud <laughs> not for you do not have a child if it's not for you that is the most important thing for real please yeah don't do I don't it intend to. i'm t far too irresponsible i i know i couldn't like i mean i could if i needed to but i'm not gonna put myself in that position i'm a fool i would be can you, I, can you imagine grumpy no sleep, Jesse? No, that guy would no. be an asshole. That would be the worst version of me. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. That's definitely the worst version of me. This one I haven't yeah. slept. <laughs> Couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I could do instead? What? This is a, speaking of heel turn. Yes. I want to take you to down a path of pure insanity. Okay. Um. So... Yesterday, after the recommendation of many, many, many people, uh, I played a game called Who's Lila? Um, oh. Who's, who's well, Lila? You talked about this last week. I'm so excited. Yes. The basic premise of Who's Lila is it is a point-and-click adventure that is split screen. So on one side, it's your character walking around, clicking things, looking at stuff, right? On the other side is the character's face. And this character has a problem where he cannot express his emotions naturally. So you, the player, in different scenes when you talk to people, must move his lips, his eyes, his like facial features in order to smile or be sad or to be scared or disgusted. Wow. You have to fit right. the scene appropriately in order for people to talk to you. Here's the thing. That is the baseline of this game. There is an underlying horror to this game. There is something in this game that I cannot, all I'll say is at a certain point, I was on a Wikipedia page reading about tulpas. And oh this... yeah, tulpas, ooh, creepy. What are tulpas? I was reading about tulpas and, and a story about some dude on Tumblr who posted his experience with tulpas and how he created a tulpa and the tulpa took over his body. Like just, I was down a rabbit hole. At one point I was looking at the coding of a website to find answer, I was like so far down a rabbit hole of nonsense. This game is, for those who know, I mentioned it last week. It is specifically listed on Steam with a category of games similar to, and it lists Pony Island. So I knew the minute I saw Pony Island, I was going to be in, you know, out there. Mm -hmm. Um, it's it's crazy. If you don't know what topas are, uh, the best 
way to explain it and shortly sum summarized is uh you create your own best friend with its own personality and uh i guess sentience but it's also you and while i'm not sure what i believe on that uh i did know the article that i found from vice it was about a bunch of my little pony fans who created my little pony characters and the entire time i was like okay but what's this for why do they do this? What's this for? And it took to the very end of the article for them to ask the question, so do you have sex with these characters? And every person was like, yeah, I mean, yeah. So I just want to say I, that's where we got to. Listen, I did a beautiful guest star on a My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. I played uh, Pear Butter. Pear Butter is that's Applejack's awesome, mom. Thank you. Oh, I sang in it. has a great song. William Shatner's in it. It's a great, like, Romeo and Juliet episode. In the lore, both of us are dead. So, like, there's no possibility. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. But I will sad, say that I was sad immediately. Slow. All right, keep going. <laughs> it's not within the episode. Just in the in the in the canon. I'm not alive. Anyway, the um. Uh, so, I yeah. was so excited to be a pony. I can't even tell you. And then I was like, somebody had to have done fan art of me. Oh no! I had no idea. the The fan art of me and my mate. <laughs> Getting it on as ponies is one of the most traumatic things I've seen on the internet, okay? <laughs> I didn't know ponies had equipment like that. There were positions that no pony could get into. Right. <laughs> I have to tell you, the internet, I thought the internet couldn't horrify me. Pair Better fan art did, in fact, Damn. horrify me, okay? Yeah. What, but to be fair to the article, it wasn't just My Little Pony guy there was like a bunch of people they were talking to one guy made a woman that he was like we just talk and we have you know like it's nice to have someone to talk to and then of course he was like i mean obviously we engage in sexual interactions and i was like so this is like a sex thing like it's i still not really 100 sure what a tulpa is but it just so seems it's like, like an, it's like an imaginary friend but like taken to the next level I guess given its own sentience that is that you don't necessarily control, but you can let take over your body from time to time. Again, I'm not, I'd have to do deep, okay. deep research, but I was like down a rabbit hole. I was looking at different things. I was looking up yantras. I was looking at like, it is a game that again, has a lot okay. of um, things that it'll throw in and you'll be like, well, what does that mean? And then if you Google it, you're like, Oh my God, what is this game about? So that's the kind of vibe of this game. Okay. It's absolutely, wow. um, okay. it's it's fascinating. It's a fascinating game. I have not beaten it, question mark, but okay. I've gotten endings, if that makes any sense. Sure. Um, I think maybe, in le you know, if you, I haven't even put in six hours. And I, it says it takes about six hours to see everything. And you don't need to see everything. You can probably figure out what the game's about way before that. But I'm obsessed with it now. And I'm like, I got to know what the hell is happening so oh okay yeah but it's it is um it's i wouldn't say it's a horror game but it's like creepy creepy and there's a it lot of things that incredibly creepy there's like a i just it's not a spoiler but like the first the opening of the game he's like hey i need to go practice my smiles in the mirror and it's just a tutorial it teaches you how to do it but he says a line of dialogue that's like yeah, you know, when I talk to people at school or I do this, or I see the woman in the boiler room. I'm like, what the hell does that mean? What <laughs> yeah. do you mean? The, what, what does that mean? Like, that's the vibe of this game where it's just a little weird, a little strange things happen every now and again. Yeah. yeah. But, but, but it, mechanically very cool. So you've, you've enjoyed it. You would uh, recommend it? Too much. Oh, oh yeah, just because it's unique. There, I don't think I've ever played anything like it, ever. The mechanic of the facial features, there's a part, there's, I mean, there's multiple parts, but like there's one part where you're being interviewed and based on how you nail the, the, like sometimes your emotions will take over. So you have to fight your face. So your mm -hmm. face is trying to be disgusted, but you have to like smile. So you like, oh. like push up and fight the face. No. Yeah, it's cool. No. Yucky. <laughs> I like it. No. I'll play it. Mm hmm. I didn't wind up playing, uh, you're not my neighbor or whatever that game was called. I, have, I still haven't played that yet. I got too into Goblin Stone, which is basically- What's Goblin I, Stone? It's I like, love Goblin Stone. It's like Darkest Dungeon, but with little goblins. Oh, really? It, I love Darkest Dungeon. It's super cute. Um, there's like a base building element to it. And um, 
at the at the very start of the game, you're like a group of like just a few little goblins and you find these ancient ruins and decide to like create a goblin society basically. Ooh. Um and uh the reviews on this game, hold on, let me change the topic. They're the, not good. They're no. mixed. Yeah, so I guess when the mixed. game first came out, it was super buggy. Oh, um, that's too bad. Yeah. And uh the the two things that I've seen pop up and that have been said to me about this game are that uh, there were a bunch of bugs. I've only run into one bug that was like kind of annoying, but it wasn't like mm -hmm. game breaking or it didn't make me like restart the game or anything. And then um, the other one was that at a certain point, there's like a harsh difficulty spike. I don't, oh. I don't think I've hit that point yet. The game has made me grind a little bit in order to get past one thing, but it, it wasn't cute. like- I like the art. It's super cute. And and it has this, you know, really ridiculous element of like breeding goblins. <laughs> so so all of the goblins have like a huge list of traits, um, a la Darkest Dungeon. Darkest Dungeon, yeah. And uh you can breed goblins to try and have more go so like one of the traits is called thick skin, and it makes it so it's harder for them to become bloodied or to or to mm -hmm, have mm -hmm. the bleed sort of dot on them so i was like well i want as many goblins as possible with with thick blood right i yeah. don't like where this is going so i don't you, like where this is going then, yeah then you like you have to you have to breed more goblins with thick blood um uh, -oh. uh have you ever seen yeah. a horse breeding video it's it's no. traumatic. What? That's what, no. like this seems. This does not seem good. What? I don't want to hear you be like. So I took my thick goblin and put him down in the breeding caves and was I like, did, make yeah. me more thick no. goblins, yeah. man. I don't like this. The way that I, because <laughs> because it's one of those games where you can rename all the goblins. So of course I've been naming all of the goblins out of like from the list of viewers at the time that I'm playing it, and it it got to the point where I had to just make a general like goblin terms and conditions. So anytime. Uh -huh. Anytime I named a goblin after a person, I'd be like, do you agree to potentially die in battle and maybe be used to breed more goblins? Are you comfortable with that? Are you comfortable with that? Well, at least you're upfront about it. If not, we can, you know, I got to go for the, I got to go for the best traits. And if you wind up being a goblin that has a good trait, I need it. Uh, I don't know what you want me to do. So. <laughs> I like how you took these cute little Crendor esque goblins yeah. and made them into some sort of breeding fact. It's it's like the game when you watch gives people... you the Warrens. You are you have to make the Warrens to make more I, goblins. Look, no, I get it. I get Why you what you're like, doing. I personally was no. like, I'm going to create a mod for this game to allow breeding of goblins. I'm so excited. I just really need these I, goblins to smush. That's not what happened. I'm with you. I get it. It's it's like when people explain what they're doing in Power World. It's like, well, after I set up my slave workshop, like, <laughs> no. I get it. No, I understand. Okay. Yeah. You shouldn't have, like, it sounds insane, but that is what the game is. I get it. You have to do it. It's part, yeah. of, the, it's part of the deal. I, but when you explain it without any footage or without it, like it does sound like you are sort of like breeding out the weakness and trying to create some sort of super race of goblins. Eugenics. I, it's yeah, eugenics. it's goblin eugenics. Yeah. You're performing yeah. eugenics. It's just yeah. not, it feels uncomfortable. Right. That's right. fair. That's super fair. <laughs> when you actually make new goblins though, two goblins just go into the Warrens and high five each other and then explode into baby goblins. <laughs> <laughs> And the first time it happened, I thought that the that the adult goblins died, <laughs> that, that they actually exploded, but they were fine. <laughs> so, anyways, <laughs> mm, awesome, cool, anyway, that's very cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I've been playing the yeah. two games I'm really excited about. Changing topics. <laughs> uh, heel, heel, wait, toe, heel toe turning? Heel, t heel turn. Okay. As a heel turn. Deep, yeah. Okay, so I've been playing Backpack Battles. Ooh, that is fun. Which is so fun. I cannot, the problem is it's only on PC right now and I wanted it on my Mac so I could, because I've been traveling a lot and I wanted to be able to play it at night mm. or on my phone. 
And then I've been playing Deep Rock Galactic Survivor. I, I'm like, I was on like a couple of kicks where I was trying to finish a larger story game. And then I'm just like doing smaller games right now. Yeah. And those are the two I love because I love Vampire for Survivors, which it was on Mac. And I played probably 200 hours of on my Mac laptop on planes. Oh, yeah. Last year. That makes sense. So good. So, yeah, I desperately need backpack battles on my phone. You're right. Um, and Deep Rock Galactic Survivor is like a prettier Vampire Survivors, but then there's digging. Oh. So greed. There's more greed about it, and that's very nice. So those are the two things I'd be playing, yeah. I... Whoa, yes. what is, why are you having <laughs> why, breathing? Yeah, mm. why, the, why the... Sorry, I had, I had to close the page. Backpack Battles, I realize now, is just inventory management the game, and I had a stress reaction. I was like, no. It is, yeah. No. It's like, um, did you did you play? Um, oh my gosh, what's the other? What's the it's other so good though game? because I I love inventory management. Did you ever play Divine Divinity? That's the best backpack, backpack management game, you know. Oh, but I this can't. is like it, only this. It stresses it's, me out so much. It's really cool. It's it's a lot like Backpack Hero in that um, because it is the major mechanic of the game. Like all of the items will have like. If this is next to this type of item, it gives it a buff or like for every empty slot to the right of mm -hmm. this item, you get X, Y, Z, you know, so, so you mm -hmm. shift things around to try and optimize uh, how well your items work and how they're benefiting yeah. you. I'm very bad at it, but I do think it's fun. I mean, looking at it, I, some of the mechanics are really cool. I'm I'm super into the combining of the items and the different battle systems and stuff. It's neat. I just know that at a certain point, I would be like, if I just got rid of everything in my bag, I'd be fine. I wouldn't what? have to consider. I wouldn't have to care about anything. I'd just empty the bag and be fine. Okay, Jesse, just be honest. How <laughs> clean is your house? Uh, Dodger, do you want to take this one or? Jesse is um, an obnoxious minimalist. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Okay, this is surprising There's to me. Nothing in there. <laughs> yeah. My yeah. apartment is super clean. My bedroom is a bed and one dresser. That There's nothing else in that bedroom. It is borderline psychotic. If I had one of those, like, just mattresses on the floor, I wouldn't want to go over to my... I'd be like, that guy's, that guy's a psycho. Uh, <laughs> no, I... Yeah, I... Uh, there is very little evidence in my apartment that I play video games at all. My, even my PlayStation wow. is hidden behind the TV. <laughs> it's like, I am... I exist in a world of when I go home, I don't want to be stressed about anything. So there's very little to stress me there. The office, on the other hand, this place is a mess. This place is filled with like weird statues and like signs and posters and stuff. Yeah. So it's a whole thing. But my I mean, home, is, this a mm -hmm. is this is this a reflection of the fact that you are not devoting yourself to yourself and all of your personality and needs are externally motivated in a demonstrative place? That the public has access to, and you have nothing of your own. Yeah, inside. Jesse. You don't. You don't have to say it like it is. That's so <laughs> mean. <laughs> oh, for sure. It is. I. I am. All I do is work. This is. This is a for sure sign of traumas and problems. Don't you worry. I'm sure some sort of psychiatrist could have a lot to say about this guy and his issues. You know what I will say though. You've got fantastic wall art. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. What do you yeah, have I, on the I, wall? Do you have anything on the walls in your bedroom? Because I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of like picturing a cheap Airbnb that has nothing but like five thread couch sheets. Right um, so you're not inaccurate in the bedroom. Bedroom has nothing on the walls. Mostly because I don't own enough things that I would want to put in the walls of my bedroom and be like, I want to look at that before I go to sleep. <laughs> Although I'm open to like some really crazy art, but the rest of my apartment has, um, like, uh, uh, I'm really into this one spray paint artist. So I have a bunch of his stuff. I have a weird 3d art thing that looks like you're looking down a street, uh, straight on. If you look at it straight on, it like makes you loopy. Cause it's like coming out of the wall. Um, I've got uh, all sorts of fun stuff and that like, some, is actually art art. You've got some like framed records and things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's nice. Okay, I, have, like, okay. I have some like nice stuff. But so it's just your most intimate place, the place where generally only you would be, um, that is empty and devoid of personality. <laughs> oh, yes, 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 yes. Oh, absolutely. It's just for sleeping. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I. the thing is, I spend so very little time at home that 
if I am at home, I go in and pass out. Like I don't do anything at home. Um, Got you. So I don't really like consider it to be a place that I'm like, I made it homey for me. It's like I'm reminded of all the things I love. I'm like, yo, I go there to sleep and eat breakfast. And like, that's pretty much it. The rest of the day I'm out. So, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. How, yeah. how, how do you at least give yourself a quality like mattress and sheets? I'm concerned oh, about yeah. your oh. linens. Oh yeah. I got one of them beds that uh, just to give me, when I get off the bed at night, the light it lights up underneath the bed. Like I'm oh, on what? Okay, I'm See, on next you bed bury level. the lead here. Okay, next bed <laughs> level. Okay, got it. Got yeah. it. The room is, is the room sucks, but the bed, oh, that's a prime bed. That bed's okay. great. It heats my toes at night. Oh, damn. Oh, that's really just nice. I want one of those. That's just your it, you, well, you could buy a bed package that does like hot and cold. But I'm like, it's LA. Yeah. I'm never gonna need to be like super hot. That's and so true. I can open a window if I want to be cold because it's LA, <laughs> right? So, uh, you know. But at night, if it gets chilly, it warms your toes, and I That's love that. Great. Mm -hmm. That's great. You know, I recently on my road trip, I went to the Sequoias with my daughter because I wanted to see big trees. I wanted to hike. I looked yeah. at the temperature there, and it was 27 degrees, and I was like, well, we should bring a coat. Didn't quite add up in my mind that there might be snow. <laughs> so, yeah, we we show up at the w Wuxaxi Lodge, which is the lodge on the Sequoia property, seven thousand feet high, and there is literally six feet of snow everywhere. <laughs> Immediately, I went to the checkout place and I said, "We're going to be leaving a day early." <laughs> that is, there's oh, a video. No. Of just to like LA messes people up. This is just a fundamental thing. Our temperature regulation is gone. It's so and strong. we do not know how to interpret the rest of the world. And I'll never forget years ago, I went to a PAX and there's a video where Krendor and I are walking down the street uh, and I have a jacket on, so I think I'm fine, except it was a blizzard. And so Krendor's having a conversation because she's sh he's Chicago as hell. So he's doing his thing. And I'm sitting there in the background shaking. And when he turns the camera to me, he's like, how are you doing? I'm like, I'm doing okay. I'm doing And I, there's so many comments that are like, is Jesse okay? Is, what's going on with him? And I'm like, <laughs> I was freezing to death is what was going on to me. Yeah. Um, yeah, I yeah. thought one coat would kind of protect me against. And then my daughter had never seen snow before. So Aww. she was so excited. But then about five minutes in, she's like, this is cold. Like she was betrayed by the world. And I was like, <laughs> I'm sorry, baby. I only brought a puffy jacket and you're wearing leggings. We need to go. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yep. Oh. Um, I remember when I first moved to L.A. and I would bring a jacket everywhere and everyone would go, why do you have a jacket? I'd go in case, oh, it, here. In case it gets in case it gets cold. And they were like, it doesn't get cold here. You don't need a jacket every day. And I was like, oh, I guess. Yeah, I'm not in Oregon anymore. Weirdly, that changes. There becomes a it moment does. where. It's 50 degrees, and you're like, I need a jacket. I need the puffiest jacket I can find. And everyone else is like, the rest of the world is like 50. Are you kidding me? 50 degrees? And you're like, it's chilly out there. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what I was building up to, right? Is I was like, oh, yeah, every day it feels pretty warm out to me, right? And then moving to England now, um, I'm finally, after, what, almost five years, I'm finally getting to the point where I'm like, Oh, one degree isn't too bad <laughs> because we have so much of the no. year where you get up in the morning to do the school run. And you're like negative five. Awesome. Let's do this. No, it's fine. <laughs> I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I couldn't even Northern California being 54. I was like, nah, hard pass. I can't do it. I'm a little, I'm a little flower. I'm a little greenhouse flower. Yeah. There was, there was a time when I lived in Buffalo, New York. And I'd be out in shorts and a t-shirt, and it'd be snowing and like negative five. And I'm like, hell yeah, I'm going to go Mighty Taco and get some get a burrito, bro. And now I'm like, I can't, it is 61 degrees. I'm not even sure I should leave the house. <laughs> That's you know what? That's amazing though. Like I, the, the uh, human body good. is incredible. We can we can learn to live in lots of different types of weather. It's pretty cool. I won't though, Dodger. <laughs> <laughs> That's so fair. I appreciate I your conviction. <laughs> <laughs> that was such a, like, I I won't. will not. Definitive. Yeah. 
Um, mm-hmm. My kid has been obsessed with the idea of making water balloons. And I'm like, honey, it's not warm oh. enough for water balloons yet. But, but we, are, we are different things, me and this child, right? And she, yeah. she will just walk outside when it's way too cold in a bathing suit and be like, get ready, everybody. I'm going to start <laughs> slinging water balloons. It's like, please don't. Please don't do that. <laughs> I made the mistake. This I, I don't have a pool. I have a very modest house because I just like living small. Yeah. In the but I, mean, I like being in the middle of LA. And you know LA. If you want to live in the middle of anything, you might as well get a shack or be, it's gotta be inherited small. wealth. Yeah. Yeah. It's got to be small or you have inherited wealth. So I'm like, I don't. And also, I I despise pools. Like, I think they're disgusting. <laughs> waste of energy. I don't swim. Sure. I need it to be a bathtub, right? So there's no pool on the premises and there never will be. But I got one of those above ground pools, you know, mm, just like, you know, yeah. six feet wide. And I filled it with the hose. And this is in the summer. It was so cold. She's like, Mom, it's too cold. So I carted buckets of hot water <gasps> from the bathtub. I've done that before. <laughs> about 40 of them to get this stupid pool. That's love, dude. It is. Mm. It is. Yeah. Uh, we had, we had, my kid and and two of her little cousins, they were like, we want the kiddie pool. We're like, okay. Blew up the kiddie pool, put some water in it. The sun was out. It was a nice warm day, but they all three of them stepped in it and went, it's too cold. Yeah. It's too cold, I dude. Mean, I, I would do the same thing. Same. This, I mean, that's why I went to Calistoga on the road trip and they had a hot pool there that was 90 degrees like fed from the springs because it's hot springs oh, it's from the earth i've never experienced the, a hot spring before that's on my bucket list i'll tell you man that pool was the only pool i've ever spent more than two minutes in ever <laughs> i sat there for two hours i'm like Damn. splash mama's in the bathtub <laughs> yeah dude that yeah it was good you should I, do they have them in england they've got to have a hot spring hot in springs? England. let's look it up I have you no go to, idea. Could you go to the city of Bath to go to a hot, like a spring? Certainly Bath does that, right? They do. Are there any hot springs in England? There are three natural oh. thermal springs in Bath. Okay. The man Dodger, we were there. Our first trip to England, we went to Bath, and that's what they sold us on. I feel like you should remember such an important time in our lives. No. <laughs> Bath, England is among the best hot spring destinations in the UK. The Damn. main resort is the Thermae Bath Spa, which houses the new Royal Spa. There's several soaking pools. There's also cross bath in a separate building. Or you could go to Sheffield, wherever the hell that is. Uh, you got to go to Bath. That's where the Romans went. You got to go to Bath. Sheffield. That's Sheffield is more of history. I, I've never been. Oh, man, look at this. Oh, a historic <laughs> now closed Roman bath. You got to get the open ones. Why they close it? Get in there. How far away is this? I'm so curious. The Insana, from you? The Insana yeah. Buxton Crescent Health Spa Hotel. Okay? You can rent one of the rooms and experience the hydrotherapy. It's a four-hour drive recall, for me to get to Bath. <laughs> what about what Sheffield? Re- Sheffield has two of them. You can make it like a whole day. When we went, we went to Bath, and then we went to Stonehenge, and that was a thing. I remember oh, Stonehenge. Cool. I'll never forget Stonehenge because the audio for Stonehenge is my favorite thing in the world. The entire time, it is one voice, one voice that's like Stonehenge was blah, 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 right. Oh. But at the end, at the end, it goes, "But we'll never know who really made it." And then another voice comes out of nowhere and goes, "We'll never know." <laughs> I was like, "What the hell is happening?" We'll that was the know. best thing I've ever heard. That was great. We'll never know. Dodger, what part of the country? Are you near Birmingham? No. Okay. There's okay. Sheffield, the Insana Buxton Crescent. Okay. What's your, what's okay. your address? Oh. <laughs> yeah. What's your address? Exactly. What's your address, Dodger. Uh, mineral water is known for its healing properties. This place looks great. Yeah. The one in yeah. Sheffield. It looks the Crescent. Oh, it looks so fancy. Insana Buxton Crescent Health Spa. Oh my God. It's so fancy. It's like curved and it looks like it should be in like Bridgerton or something. <laughs> what? Um, like that's I, that's my only measure of England. Bridgerton or London? Bridgerton. I love this. 
I just want to say for the record, looking up Crescent Health Spa, um, it gave me one that I only now realize is in LA with two stars. And I was like, I don't know what Felicia's looking at, but that does not look good. I was like, oh, it's in LA. There, right, right, right. There is a hot springs that just reopened near LA. It just reopened, Jesse. Hot spring. LA I like this hot vacation springs? planning we're all doing. <laughs> Guys, we should exactly. all go to some hot springs. It was I great. I'm so in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The Beverly Hot Springs is it there? You know that's mm, it. They it, just reopened Deep Creek Hot Springs in the San Bernardino. Oh, you don't want to do that. The secluded clothing optional hot springs. No, <laughs> well, I'm sorry. Where <laughs> hmm? clothing uh, hot springs? The Deep Creek Hot Springs in the San Bernardino National Forest. It is. It's an arduous hark. It's trek. You can't. You you got an arduous trek. That's a. So you got to. You no. got to work. You got to work for the nudity. Right. Right. It's right. A I mean, two and like, a half look. mile hike. No, thank you. There's anything I'm gonna. But then when you're done, clothes come off. Jump in that pool with the other nudists. Man, that's good times. There's you one the near Death Valley. Oh, uh, Glen Ivy. That's it. They just reopened Glen Ivy, Glen and Ivy. it's an actual hotel. The Glen Ivy Hot Springs. In what? Corona, it's two hours. This is where you need to go. 104 degree mineral baths. <laughs> go in the salt oh, man. caves. And now I'm worried that's going to be like, you never, you ever have one of those things where you, you get worried that you're going to enjoy it so much that nothing else will be as good. So you just don't want to do it. You're like, I can't do that. Then I'll judge everything else by that. And then I'll just yeah. be more sad than I was before I started. I have almost planned multiple like spa day things and I always back out on it because there is some part of my brain that tells me that the second I get there, I'm going to be so awkward about it. And I don't know why. <laughs> like, yeah. mm -hmm. have you ever gone to the Korean spa and just walked around aggressively I've naked? I've never gone to a spa in general. So the idea of going me to either. a spa. And so the idea of like going for a spa day is like what? weird to me. Yeah. Okay. You got to go to the Olympic spa in. Okay. <laughs> I got to I got. Listen. Yeah. The Olympic spa in Koreatown in Los Angeles. They will. These women. Okay. So you're in a room and you have just, you got to be naked. Okay. And there's two pools. You got to just jump on in. And then there's like a row of four, like little places on each side and they put you on there like a slab of meat and scrub pounds of skin off you. I'm not kidding. Pound, I, sloughing off your body. And I was like, I thought I was a clean woman. They're like, I didn't know you could be smooth right here under your <laughs> arm, but they did. I was like, oh, I'm magic. But like, you'll feel it peeling off your body. Oh my just goodness. Skin. Does it and hurt? Just, Yes, they're like, and the, the the ladies are wearing barely a loincloth, and they're like lifting your leg up, getting under here, scrubbing like right. aggressively scrubbing, and you're feeling things swap off your body. It's the best experience. I was gonna say I don't know if this is a good pitch or not. <laughs> you can't be shy. That's all I gotta say. Right, right, right. <laughs> if that's the key, then I have to wait. I have to hit old man age where I'm just fine balls out. Like there's like an old man age where, especially guys, if you go to the gym, there's an age where you just become so old. You don't care anymore. Sure. That's where I need to get to. I need to live that yeah. long so I can old man it and just be like, Oh, Hey there boys balls dangling. Like that's what I need. I want to make young men uncomfortable with my aggressive nudity. That's yeah. where I need to get to. I have a pitch though. Because Listen. you won't be able to like truly enjoy being balls out unless you've experienced being balls in, you know? Go on. So maybe you should do the spa experience now so that when yeah, you're yeah. so that so that when you hit whatever this mystical age is, when you hit the mystical age and you can balls out, you can be like, this is so right. different. You won't really know the difference. In order to pre I get it though. In order you know? to appreciate balls out. You must first balls in. No, I get, I get it. Yeah. I, yeah. It's yeah. so deep. It's so deep and philosophical. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so deep, those balls. So deep. Yeah. 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 I get it. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder uh, what's going on in that head of yours? <laughs> My head? Yeah. I say yeah, less outlandish curious. stuff than you. I would, I would bargain. Whoa, I don't think so. I think so. I don't think that's true.
Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. someone's bored enough to go through all of the Geek Enders so far and take clips of the weird shit you have said and the weird shit that I have said and, and compare and contrast. I don't think anyone would have the patience to do that. I doubt they would. Somebody's doing it literally right now. Yeah. <laughs> Someone's already started. <laughs> they already have it ready. They're like, oh, you don't think that I've been doing that the whole time? <laughs> I already had it queued up. Mm -hmm. I've just been waiting to hit export. <laughs> Jesse, I want to see how much skin they take off your body when they slough you. I would imagine a lot. Although, although I am a, I'm, I'm currently existing in a double shower. I was going to say you're a, you're a two shower a day dude, though. I don't. Yes. I don't. Oh, that's aggressive. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that. I take a shower in the morning to wake up because that's like a thing I've done my entire life. But yeah, then, yeah. Uh, when I'm done with all this stuff that I do. Uh, usually around five or six, I work out. And so, and I'm trying, guy. I'm trying. One day you're all doomed. I'm going to be. It's peak, over for you, bitches, peak, et cetera. Peak physical condition. You're all going to be, be like. High school, you'll be high school sock dick. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to get a message from that, that teacher like, hey, good looking. I'll be like. Still inappropriate. Have yeah, a, have very stay, inappropriate. Sir. Very inappropriate. Yeah. But I, but uh, the big thing is that, uh, look. Hey, fat dude 101. I sweat like an mf -er when I work out. And the problem is, is that I'm like, well, I got to take a shower. So uh, I have to take a shower after that. And so I take a shower right before bed now too. So I'm like doubling up. At night, in the early morning and late at night, I'm the cleanest any man ever exists in the world. And I scrub like crazy because I don't want to be a stinky dude. There's too many stinky dudes in the world. No, thank you so much. There's nothing hotter than a clean dude, okay? <laughs> Have either of you showered at the gym before? I don't. Um, gym? What gym? I'm mean, just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Uh, my gym is in my apartment complex. So I like literally walk downstairs and walk upstairs. So it's not a, that's I not was, a big thing. The only time I had a gym membership was when I wanted to take old lady Zumba class because I wanted to feel better than all the other older ladies. Just aesthetically. Okay, sure. Mm hmm so, and then it was an LA fitness and I had to fax a letter to them to stop them from charging me. They were like, no, we only take fax. So I had to fax. LA like fitness five years is ago. actually the worst. Yeah. It's the worst, worst organization. I had yeah. to fax. If we can so, de-influence anyway. you, if you live near an LA fitness, do not. I also had it. so many issues being like, I don't want this anymore. <laughs> They made me fax it. There's, I, I'm not sure what the LA gym scene is, but I feel like it's aggressively sexual in that <laughs> there's a, uh, there's a billboard. I see it yeah. all the time now uh, for Equinox gym. I uh, think. Yeah. They're so expensive. I, yeah. I would love to do it because it looks so pretty, but it's 250 a month. I can't afford that. No. That's my latte budget. <laughs> there is like the billboard on once. And I'm, I'm not, it's, like all innuendo, so the words aren't exact here, but on one half of the billboard, it is like a dude flexing, and it's like vitality. And then the other half is like a woman's, like just this part with like glazed lips and weird fruit particles coming out of her mouth, like drool, and it's like vitality. I'm like, what? Ugh. What is? What are they trying to hint at here? Weird. And I'm pretty sure it's all sex-based. I'm pretty sure they're like, if you go to the gym, guys, you're gonna get laid. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what it is, but it's oh, like for sure. very I weird. Mean, what's that gym on Sunset and Crescent Heights that is like famous for the hookups? I can't remember the name of it, but it's there's like, a hookup that gym. Is, I, that's out of my. It's the hookup gym. Yeah. Oh, you know. I mean, like, of course I know about it, but I don't want to talk about it because, like, I'm there all the time, and I don't want to, you know. Like, oh, right. Of course. Yeah. 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 Right. You know that one. <clears throat> the one that I go to. The one that you can find Jessica I said constantly. Right. In your you apartment know? complex, as established. <laughs> <laughs> my apartment complex is like three machines in a dream it is not it is it is it's barely barely a gym right there's like uh, like six weights some guys always on them all day and he's like this is where i'm at bro gotta get my swole on it's like all right bud live your life i bought a elliptical for my um room and i've used it a handful of times in a year 
handful. Uh, we had we had a hot minute where a bunch of our friends got Pelotons. Oh, everybody. And then they're all selling them now. They're all selling all them, them now. Yeah. Um, yeah. One of Sam's relatives had one and was like, please, does anybody want one? And Sam and I were <laughs> like, do we want one? No, right? I don't. I don't like do pedaling. We? I don't know. I do like I do like the elliptical because it makes me feel like I'm going somewhere. Yeah. But the whole pedaling thing is not for me. I love ellipticals. I actually feel like I'm doing something on them rather than like a treadmill or a bike or a row machine or whatever. Ellip for some reason, it's the illusion of success is what an elliptical is. And I'm uh, here for it. Yeah, it here is. Here for it. I'm well, a... you have nothing else in your bedroom. <laughs> That's so true. You have space to burn, dude. You are correct. You are <laughs> correct. This could be my future. Um, my mom and I are serial pacers. If, if we're like talking or thinking about something, we will pace all over the house. I watched my mom do it my whole life growing up and now I do it all the time. And uh, they have those, those little walk pads, don't they? It's basically like a treadmill, but it's not for running. It's just for walking. And I've been very tempted to get a walk pad and just put it in. I have one. Just put I it have in front a of the TV. treadmill under my writing desk that goes up and the desk goes up and down as a treadmill. And it's very, I only use it when I'm watching TV, but I'm like, oh, I'm exercising while I watch TV and I watch it on my laptop and it actually works out well for me. Yeah. So it's deductible. <laughs> right. <laughs> I feel like it could get out some of the, some of the weird paces. Yeah, the paces. And then, and then I, and then I can watch TV at the same time. You know? Exactly. <laughs> I just, I saw a comment said, uh, they say biking is best for people with stre uh, strengthening knees, and now I just keep thinking about ugly knees. Like, yo, if you got ugly knees, you should start biking. You're going to have some swole knees. People are you could be knees. like Jughead. Mm -hmm. Eating 8,000 <laughs> burgers a day and having beautiful knees. Mm -hmm. He's weird. He's a weirdo. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I will say, if you want the real RG experience, <laughs> uh -huh. uh, that, that CW show um, Riverdale is truly one of the most insane things that ever existed it is truly ever. a show oh, it's good. yeah i will tell and you though when riverdale was really popular cole sprouse who plays jughead who's hot jughead yeah he uh <laughs> yeah hot jughead. i mean i don't mean to I, I don't mean to objectify him because he actually always recognizes me at comic-con and i was like oh jughead knows me <laughs> <laughs> I and then we were on a plane only think of him as jughead but but here's the thing he was on some disney thing and I was at the airport with him one day. We were just chatting and we we're waiting to go to Vancouver to work. And like, I will tell you, he was so accosted, not by children, but by mothers of children who were oh, inappropriate yeah. with him Ugh. because of Zach and Cody on Disney Channel. Whoa, whoa. They were like, hi, uh, can I get a picture? And I was like, for my daughter. But I'm like, your daughter's nowhere near here. You right. want a picture it's with Cole Sprout. Yeah. I was like, uh, That's so weird. I, let's move over here. Oh my god. That goodness. is the same Poor vibes as when they would describe like opening night of those vampire movies and be like, and yeah. it's just like a bunch of uh, older women just going to the movie just to hang, like, see, I'm like, yeah. But here's the thing I don't know that I want to shame that. If anything, I want to lift those women up because I feel like the more horny older women, the better I'm going to do in life. And so I just yeah. want to put, put that, that out there. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it. Use that in the video. You're welcome. <laughs> you know what? No. Make that the first thing people see in the video. So when they go click on the video for the first time, they're hit with that immediately. Mm -hmm. So we can get that message out there. <laughs> Call me. Call me, Nana. Don't say that, dude. <laughs> Don't say that. That's so creepy. <laughs> on that note, I have to go. <laughs> That's true. You do have to go. I actually do have to go. Oh my god. But goodness. you know, Jesse made it so that I don't regret having to leave. <laughs> oh, I, I my goodness. run. I actually would just love to log off without even saying anything just, at this point. Bye. <laughs> Felicia, you've been amazing. Um normally we ask our guests to to give chat homework, but you're in a rush, so we're not gonna do that. No, no. Your homework is to figure out, uh, link Jesse all the places he can get a vasectomy in Los Angeles, okay? <laughs> There's, okay there you go. There's your homework. 
That's your homework. Uh, amazing. <laughs> Felicia, you are so lovely. I'm so glad that we got to do this. Thank yes, you so much we for have to do this us. before another 10 years, okay? Yes, Let's, please. I'm around. <laughs> I'm around. That. I'm on Twitch. I'm like Twitch adjacent. We can, we can hang out. I love that. Yes. Um, I'm going to get a message from my mother that's going to be like, why did you make Felicia feel uncomfortable? She's <laughs> never going to talk to you again. We've been down that road. It's already our road. <laughs> that's our road, Jesse mom. <laughs> If he ever made me feel comfortable, I would be uncomfortable. Does that make sense? Oh my goodness. I love it. Oh, um, Felicia, okay. is uh, is there anything that you want to shout out? Anything you want to pitch before you vanish? Uh, yeah, just follow me on Twitch. I'm over here. I stream a couple times a week. I think I'm going to stream putting together my 3D printer Ooh. Uh, on Sunday. So tune in for that. If you're in Austin, come to um, the event. Not the, Not the solar thing uh, i'm doing an event with ernest klein ernie klein who wrote ready player one his new book is uh the bridge to bat city and i actually am the audio reader on it and we're doing an event <gasps> oh monday my gosh, night it's amazing How yeah cool. it's pretty great monday night at 6 p.m at the austin american statesman just check book people if you want a ticket you'll get a book you'll get it signed all that stuff monday night in austin and then if you like my writing, go to Audible and check out my project, Third Eye. It just won the Audio World for the best audio drama of the year, although it's a comedy. It has me oh and Neil Gaiman and Will Wheaton and Sean Astin and Lily Pichu and a bunch of other people in it. So check it out if you want to. So seven. Cool. Yeah, thank you. So that, thank you for letting me plug stuff. Of course. Yeah. Um, thank you all so much for watching. We will be back here again. Uh, same Geek Enders time, same Geek Enders channel. If you want to watch the VOD of this or any other Geek Enders, you can find them at youtube.com slash Jesse Cox. Jesse, is there anything else that we need to say before we peace out? Thanks for tuning in. Love y'all. Uh, sorry to be an embarrassment as always. <laughs> we love you, Jesse. Oh, boy. <laughs> You're the best. <laughs> See Disgusting, you guys but later. Bye bye. 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 Yeah, yeah. You know what time it is. It's time for the Geek Enders podcast. Mega Ran, Jesse, and Dodger. What up? Let's go. Yo, it's the weekend. Yeah, it's time to geek out. Let it begin. Go on, stream and shout. It's Jesse and Dodger, so give them a follow and see what the Geek Enders are all about. Yo, it's the weekend. Yeah, it's time to geek out. Let it begin. Go on, stream and shout. It's Jesse and Dodger, so give them a follow. Number one geek podcast, without a doubt. Yo, another end of another long week. Got a job and a kid, I know that you all beat. So, take a second, grab a drink and vibe while we catch you up in just a matter of time on gaming comics whatever you're doing if you're nerdy like us then you know you should tune in thank you for sharing our world with us now follow subscribe and turn this up yo it's Come the on. weekend yeah it's time to geek out let it begin go on stream and shout it's jesse and dodger so give them a follow number one geek